and welcome back to Emily Reads Books. If you're new here, my name's Emily, and today we are going to be talking about my best and worst reads of 2020. This video is only a little bit late. <laughs> Better late than never. Let's not dilly-dally, we got a lot to go through. So I thought we would start with my most favorite books of 2020 and then go into my least favorite books. The way that I kind of categorized it was I had books that I rated four and five stars. And then from that, I kind of picked books that I really thought stood out to me as books that really made my year special in terms of what books I read. And then for my least favorite books, I kind of chose ones that were three stars or below. I didn't have, I think I had maybe one, one or two books I didn't finish uh, that were rated really poorly. So even my worst books were not really bad. 2020 for me, reading wise was really special. This was the most diverse year in terms of reading for me, in terms of characters, sexuality, authors, subject material. So this year was really, really amazing in a lot of ways. And I have been trying my best to emulate that in this year, 2021 as well. So yeah, in 2020, I did my best to diversify my shelf as much as possible. We, that was Carol. We started the Buy Book Club with my friends Logan and Kelsey, which has also helped immensely. I made a ton of friends in the book community. I think that this has been really, really, really wonderful. And these are all things I want to continue for the rest of my life in terms of what I read and why I read it. So without further ado, let's get to it. I had a really, really hard time choosing what books I wanted to choose for this. There were so many books this year that I loved, so I chose. I think I ended up having 11 books that really stuck out to me as being just by far the most incredible books this year. So I'm gonna, we're gonna speed through them because I don't want this video to be 30 minutes long. So the first one I wanna talk about is A Great and Terrible Beauty. I picked this one up towards the beginning of the pandemic, back in April maybe. And this was a book I had found used and was kind of interested in it. It sounded really interesting and I picked it up. I ended up loving it, read the rest of the series and I gave the first one five stars. I don't normally like portal books very much. I find them to be very confusing for whatever reason, but this one I really loved. If you liked the Bridgerton Netflix series, I think you'll like this one, especially if you love elements of fantasy in your books. So read it. <laughs> Next I would say this is like the one like big non-fiction book I read this year. I read Eat, Pray, Love and I went into this thinking I wouldn't like it. Again I bought it for like 50 cents at a used bookstore and I ended up reading this and fell in love with the story. I thought it was really life-changing, it was very moving and the fact that it was a true story was incredible and look I, I can't say enough good things about it. I loved watching her story unfold and the the idea of finding yourself amidst all of the horrible things that this world throws at us i don't think there's a better metaphor for this year a curse so dark and lonely i was looking for a new beauty and the beast retelling to read and this came up at my bookstore it's one of the few books i've ever like paid like full price for um because it was a new release at the time and I really fell in love with this book. I know it is not everybody's favorite and there, I mean, definitely are some things that I would personally change about it. But in terms of the Beauty and the Beast retelling, I think this is one of the better ones that I've read and I really loved it. I love that our main character is differently abled than other characters and it isn't seen as something that makes her less than, it just makes her different and special in her own way. On track with the Beauty and the Beast retellings, I read two other ones new ones um, last year that I really liked and that was Hunted by Megan Spooner. It was great. It was <laughs> it was a Beauty and the Beast retelling. It had a lot of elements of the original tale which I really loved and it kind of put it its own little twist on it and I thought it was great. I don't really have any complaints about it. I just it's something I enjoy reading and so it was good. And the other one was Bookish and the Beast by Ashley Poston. I literally still can't get enough of this book. I have to reread it. It will happen. I don't know how, I don't know when. It it is probably gonna be one of my new comfort reads. I read it so quick, I devoured it. I gotta read it again. <laughs> Moving into some more contemporary books, I read Opposite of Always, which was beautiful and heartbreaking, and god, it was so good. If you haven't read it, please pick it up. It is about a boy that I literally, 
can't even remember their names at this moment. I'm like, my mind is like racing, but this boy falls in love with a girl and she's dying. This is literally in the first scene, so it's not really a spoiler. He's like, I have to save her, I have to save her. And the minute he like touches her, he gets thrown back in time to when they first meet. It's amazing. And it's romantic and it's heartbreaking. And God, it was just so good. Like do yourself a favor, read opposite of always. I also read, I also read Eleanor Oliphant is completely fine. This book, this is another one of those books where it was really hyped up and I was so nervous I wasn't gonna like it. And I was like, oh no, oh no, oh no. And I ended up reading it and then I loved it and then the twist happened and then I was very sad and then it got better. And obviously I don't wanna spoil anyone anything so I'm not gonna say much, but <sighs> Eleanor Oliphant is completely fine and it is a wonderful book and you should definitely read it. <laughs> I also read Felix Ever After, which is another five-star read from this year. I, I've talked about this book before. This book is wonderful. It is sweet. It is real. It is raw. And it tackles a lot of issues I have not seen in literature, especially teen lit. So definitely, definitely, definitely check that one out. And now we come to Ray Bearer by Jordan Ifwanko. <laughs> this book so good. I knew very, very little going into it. Recommended to me by Logan, the my book boy, and I was so excited to read this book because Logan had hyped it up so much for me that I didn't know hardly anything about it, but I knew it was going to be good, and I was not expecting for it to be as good as it was. It was so good. So please, 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 if you haven't read Ray Bearer, it is literally incredible. I don't want to tell you what it's about because I think it'll ruin like the magic that Jordan has created in her novel. Just go read it. Then we have Way of Kings by Brandon Sanderson. This book was a beast. My copy is like 100 or 1100 pages or something. It took me forever to get through, not because I wasn't loving it, but because I was like, I have to like set aside time to sit down and read this book. <laughs> and I just like couldn't find it. And then I finally did. Oh my God, it was so good. I, I, I cannot put into words the epicness of this book. And I'm so excited to start Words of Radiance this week. Last but not least, we have The Legend series by Marie Lu. This became a favorite of mine so quick. It was so good. I have to reread these. I think I want to reread The Hunger Games first because I it's been longer since I've read The Hunger Games, but like I have to reread the Legend series. It is so timely and so good and I don't think it gets enough hype for how good it is. So if you haven't read the Legend series, Obviously all of these books are like four or five stars and they're all amazing and I think you should all read them, but just do yourself a favor. If you loved The Hunger Games or Divergent or any of those, or even if you didn't, you might still like this one. Just, oh my God, it's so good. Moving on to the other side of the spectrum, we have my least favorite books of 2020. Now, like I said before, some of these are three stars. That does not mean I thought it was horrible. It does not mean that I thought it was a bad book. It just probably wasn't my taste or I couldn't stay engaged. That's, don't, don't be mad at me. Or be mad at me, I don't really care. So the first book I DNF'd this year was, was Eternal. And I think I've mentioned this like four times already, but it just, I couldn't handle it. I get it's meant for teens, but this is supposed to be her guardian angel. I just, it wasn't for me. So I put that one away and just didn't, didn't continue. The only other book I DNF'd this year was The Haunting of Hill House. I tried reading this for my Halloween spooky reads thing and it just was not it for me. I, it didn't even get scary before I stopped and I was like, I don't know, 70 pages in and it was boring and I didn't I didn't like the writing style and it just wasn't for me there were so many characters I couldn't keep track it was just it <sighs> I feel horrible that I didn't finish it but it's it just wasn't for me maybe I'll try again but we'll see so these next three are all three stars I have 
The Nobodies, which I read earlier in the summer. And I, I liked the premise of The Nobodies. I thought it was good. However, she kept hating on millennials. She was a millennial. I didn't understand. She was like, these young people, these young people, I don't understand these young people. They don't, they have all this technology. And I was like, girl, you're like 30. This was written like four years ago. Babe, you're a millennial. So other than that, I have some really good representation in it and like some really fun characters that I loved, but overall was not my cup of tea. I also read Revealed, the 11th book in the House of Night series. It was as good as you could expect it to be. At that point, I just wanted it to be over, but I still had another one to read. So, that's that. And then I have 500 Miles From You, and this was another three-star read that was cute. It was romantic. It had a lot of really fun elements to it, but at the end of the day, just wasn't stellar in any ways for me personally. That was it. That was, it was, it was fine. It was a good book, but it wasn't great. As always, I'm probably missing a hundred books that I would love to put on this list. I just can't, I can't, I can't remember. So I'm sorry if I didn't include your favorite book that I read this year <laughs> or, or your least favorite book that I forgot to mention was bad. I don't, I'm not really sure. I do hope that you enjoyed this video. And if you did, if you would like and subscribe to my channel, I post a new video every week. Thank you so, so much for watching and I will see you next time.